being efficient on a job site means that you're good at your job. Not being efficient All right, so the six things that I think are crucial for every electrician that wants to be an outstanding electrician to make sure that they are being efficient, they're bringing in a lot of money for the company, but they're also getting a lot of work done at a high standard are the following. The first thing is keeping your materials tracked and organized. I know this is crazy. You probably have bosses always yelling at you about material, keep material. But think about this. If you've got like stacks of conduit and you know that you have to work right there, and people are like stepping on the conduit and trying to work and they're like kicking materials around because you're really unorganized and you've just got stuff everywhere. It takes time away from your day. It makes everything that you're doing much slower so you're getting less work done throughout the day. So it's really crucial on job sites to pick a corner, get all your material in the corner and make sure it's not an area that you're actually gonna have to do work. Another thing is like if you've got outside work and you dump a whole bunch of conduit and it's in Texas and it's 110 degrees out, in about 15 minutes, you're gonna burn yourself every single stick of that conduit that you pick up. So make sure that you're putting all of your stuff in the shade somewhere. And again, out of the way, like keep it close enough so people can use it. You know, you're not having to go like 500 yards to get something. Manage your material right on job sites. Make sure it's not in everybody else's way. So just managing your materials, making sure that you know where everything is. If you've got a job box, when you open that thing up, make sure you've got like stacks of, of you know, wire in one place and you've got some trays and you've got boxes and everything's well laid out so everybody can see what you've got. Because that's another thing with everybody not knowing what's there because materials just fucking strewn throughout the whole job site, you can't work efficiently because you're constantly running around asking people, do you have this? Do you know where this is? But if you know where all your materials are and everybody else can see where they are, everybody knows what we have and what we don't have. So it's really, really crucial to manage the material on your job sites. The next thing that's gonna help your efficiency is keeping really good notes. Now you can either keep a lot of notes on your plan if you don't like doing that and you're sloppy and you can't keep, you can't write like an adult, then maybe keep a notebook. I've done both. You know, when I, when I draw circuits out, I use colors. I actually get a whole bunch of different colors. I have this Avengers marker case that looks like a lunchbox that I carry on my job sites. It's got pencils, it's got everything, erasers, all kinds of stuff in it. But it allows me to keep my plan really organized. And every time I run a home run, I mark that it's been run and I, I label everything with if it's an arc fault or if it's dual function, if it's GFCI, like I keep everything so organized so that anybody that comes up and looks at my plan, they got all the answers that I've got. And on every job, I always keep multiple lists. So I have one list for all of the materials that I've used um, or materials that I need to order. It's just generally materials. I have another one that's questions for the homeowner or for the, you know, the building, uh, for the GC of the building and it's stuff that I just can't answer and I don't know, and a lot of those things start to add up and you'll constantly be forgetting things if you're not writing it all down. So I keep a whole questions list, and then as I get things answered, I cross every single thing off. I'll even make lists for specific tasks that I need to do for the day, and I'll lay my whole day out, and as those things are going, I'm crossing every single thing off, and I'm writing whose name is doing each thing too, because I will outthink each person as well. When I get on a job site, I look around at who I have. I'm like, I know their skill levels, I know what they should do, so he's gonna do this, and then after he's done with that, he's gonna go over here and do this and this and this. And then I do that for every single person. So I already know next time somebody comes up to me and they're like, hey, I'm done, it's like, all right, cool, go do this over here. And it's efficient, right? It just keeps everybody moving and it keeps you checking things off of a list so you're not missing all kinds of stuff. And then the other thing that I keep notes on is change orders, right? So anytime, if you're dealing with like large scale custom homes, you're gonna have tons of changes constantly. All changes should be recorded and you should be able to give your boss at the end of the day, end of the week, whatever. These are all the changes for work we already did that they made us, us undid and go back and change stuff. So you need to bill them for all of this. Number three is walking the job at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. As a job lead, you need to know where everything's at and what things are left hanging, what got covered, what didn't get covered. You need to be checking people's work and you can kind of do this throughout the day. But I always go the very first like 30 minutes, I'll grab my coffee. I'm usually there a little bit before everybody else is. If I'm in a commercial environment and I've got lifts in the air, I'm looking at everything that they are going to run in and I'm actually imagining them up on lifts. I'm thinking about 
all of the problems ahead of time. So that 30 minutes, while we're not getting anything done, we're getting so much done. We're getting so much handled so that the rest of our day just flows and there's no questions. Everything's already been thought of. And then at the end of the day, I take another 30 minutes while everybody else is cleaning up or finishing things up and I'm walking through to see where did we finish all of these things? What are the problems that we're gonna hit tomorrow? What are the things that when I got my coffee in the morning and I come here, what do I need to look at? What do I need to like try to solve when I'm here tomorrow? So just that keeps you so efficient. It keeps you knowing everything about your job. And really when you're double checking people's work, it doesn't matter how long people have doing been doing work, double check everybody and double check every single thing they've done. Double check everybody and double check every single thing they've done. Follow every conductor they have run and make sure it's stapled where it needs to be stapled. Is it at the right height? Like you need to check everything because even people like me that have been doing this for a really long time, I still miss, I still make mistakes. I might measure and think I wrote 18 on a stud for you know the top of a receptacle and I for some reason was like talking to somebody and wrote 24 and now you got this one receptacle that's like up higher than the rest. So everybody makes mistakes. So it's really, really crucial that you are the quality assurance person and you're constantly just double checking, looking at things and making sure everything's all right because ultimately it's gonna come down to you anyways. It's all gonna be your fault if anything that they did is wrong. Next up is keep materials stocked in your truck or your van. Keep that vehicle stocked up as much as you can. I know a lot of times it's hard to get stuff in there, especially if you got an apprentice, all their stuff's in there too, and you got multiple ladders and everything. But the, the more materials that you have, like I keep these little DeWalt bins that have multiple different compartments. I keep every kind of screw you could ever want. I've got every kind of connector, coupling, single barrel, double barrel, three quarter, half inch, one inch, two inch. I just keep as much as possible because you're always gonna be in some stupid situation. You're like way out in the country and the closest Home Depot is an hour and a half in either direction. And now you have to go take three hours, hour and a half there, hour and a half back, out of your day where you're not there anymore or the apprentice you send is not there anymore. And that's one less person now that's doing stuff for three straight hours, just because you didn't think to keep your materials stocked in your van or your truck. I recommend keeping as much as you can. Keep some extra switches, receptacles, different colors, decor, you know, standard single receptacles, keep a clock plug or two just because you never really know. You know, keep mail adapters, keep some GFIs, keep some WRTR receptacles and GFIs, keep some bubble covers, every kind of breaker, just like one or two, you know, QO breakers, one or two home line breakers, the stuff that you use most often. Maybe keep some arc faults, some dual functions, you know, like keep as much stuff in your truck or van as possible. It's not even like service techs need to do this more than anybody else because all you're doing is running into problems every day and being like, do I have one of those on the truck? Can I fix this problem right now? Or do I have to go drive to Home Depot or go to the supply house and come back and be able to do all of this stuff? So for service techs, like this is a no brainer, but even for construction people, because construction, you're always doing stuff and you're running across things you didn't expect. And you're like, fuck, how am I gonna handle this right now? Oh, maybe I got one of those in the truck, you know? And if you're lucky enough to be on a job where you've got like multiple trucks and a lot of people have a lot of different materials, you're always like, hey man, you got like another roll of wire? <laughs> you got some 12 2 on your truck? Yeah, 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 I do. So it saved you, but it was because you didn't think about that ahead of time that if you were by yourself and they weren't there, you would have to go get that stuff. So keep on top of your materials in your van and in your truck. Uh, kind of like we said, manage your materials on a job site, but this is different. This is like your all day, every day, what you're showing up with. And I think the more stocked that you can be, the better, but don't just leave piles of shit everywhere in your van because you're not gonna know what you have. So now you just have less room and more shit that you don't know. So you're still wasting time because you didn't realize that you had that two inch nail plate, you know, hidden under this thing. So you're leaving for an hour to go get a damn nail plate that you already have. So just the managing materials is crucial and making sure you're fully stocked up is really, really important. Number five, uh, keep everybody working. And if that means you not working so that everybody else is, it is gonna be so much more efficient to have five people doing five different things than you doing one thing and five people kind of standing around not really knowing what they should do and not wanting to come up to you because they don't want to get a hammer thrown at it because it looks like you're busy. Don't be so focused in on what you're doing. Your job as a lead 
is to make sure everybody else is good and that they're constantly moving and they're constantly keeping going so that you have all of these pieces that are being worked at the same time while you stand back and just manage all of it. And if there's time, tool up and go to work, do some stuff. But you're very quickly gonna have somebody be like, hey man, <laughs> as soon as you start something, it's always as soon as you start. Somebody's gonna call and be like, I don't know how to do this, can you help? You know, so you, it's your job to just go make sure that everybody else is moving. You're kind of like a conductor up here, conducting an orchestra. So you can't conduct an orchestra while sitting here trying to like play your clarinet or <laughs> whatever the fuck you play. You gotta stop all of that and realize that you're now leading the team and you're making sure that you're anticipating need, that you're helping everybody else out, that you know what everybody's doing and that you're of help to the whole team rather than you being Mr. I'm gonna terminate all these breakers because I don't want anybody else to mess it up. No, nah, dude, let them mess it up. Honestly, like train people. Let people that don't know what they're doing have a shot to do stuff. The only way you got where you're at is because one day somebody let you put breakers in and land stuff. The, you stepping back and sitting there not doing anything so that you can train somebody else and let them do it, it's gonna make you have a stronger team. The more experience you give other people, the better off you're gonna be. And a lot of times like new journeymen struggle with this. They don't step back and realize that there's three helpers around them just bullshitting and not doing anything because you're like, shoveling and you're hammering and you're doing all this stuff. And like me, a lot of times I'm just like, yo, 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 dude, stop. You got three fucking people, 18 year old kids that are not working. They're just sitting there dicking around and they're not gaining any experience. These ones need to learn how to work hard. They need to learn how to sweat, how to hit their fucking thumb and split it open with a hammer. Let them do that. Step back and just teach. It's just as valuable and I know it feels counterintuitive because you're not working and you're the trained one. So like you have an impact on a job site so you need to keep busy. Sure, that's, that's true for like super green hands. Sometimes you just need to be the one that does it and you tell them, go get the coupling, you know, and that's their whole job is just going back and forth. But at a certain point, your inability to step back and allow them and teach them and train them you know, so they can get more experience, you're keeping them down, which is also gonna be keeping you down. You're never gonna be able to be more efficient than you are when you've got a bunch of trained people around you that already know what to do. Um, so just kind of get in that mentality of stepping back every once in a while. You don't have to be the one wearing the tools if you got a bunch of people around you. Just drive the team and make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to. And finally, number six, you've probably heard me talk about this, copious amounts, learn how to shift gears. So there's gears to this shit. If you guys haven't figured that out already, there are some jobs where you've got so much money into it that sitting and being really slow and meticulous and making sure everything is beautiful matters far more. And there are jobs where you don't have very much in it and you're just trying to fly through and make stuff happen. So speed is more important and maybe the environment, like the, the, the aesthetics of what you're doing don't actually matter because it's somewhere that nobody's gonna see anything. So you don't have to be like, pretty, you know, an inspector's never gonna like judge your prettiness. But there's this balancing act between speed and quality. And you have to start learning how to shift gears and know when like, dude, inspector's coming in 20 minutes. We need to wire this entire house. Let's go, just go, you know? Like there's this speed that needs to happen sometimes. And it's not, I'm not sitting here saying don't care about quality. I'm saying that to prioritize the slow, meticulous quality and the fast getting way more done in a less, you know, in a quicker time. There's a balancing act. And sometimes you might be on a really meticulous thing, but like all of a sudden you got steel workers that are coming in and they need to take the whole area and you were supposed to be done with your thing. And it's just like, something just popped up, let's go. Stop, everybody get off what you're doing, let's go. Let's hammer this out, you know? So there is a reason, don't ever let somebody tell you, oh, you should never be fast. You should always only be slow and meticulous. That's not true. Those people are just up their own asses about, oh, I'm quality and I do such good work. Shut the fuck up, man. You're slow and everybody talks about it behind your back. Like there is, there is this need to be able to be fast and efficient. And the only way that you're gonna find efficiency is if you can balance both of these things and know when to apply them. And what it does as a byproduct is it allows you to find your speed, your natural pace at which you go because you're gonna find that doing pretty work is really admirable, sure. A lot of people like looking at pretty work, but also doing things really fast and getting through a ton of stuff 
in a day is also super admirable. But getting through a ton of stuff and it, none of it working, <laughs> as often happens, is not admirable. Taking so much time to charge a customer 30 hours for something that could have been done in four hours, so you just charge them out the ass for something that you didn't need to, or losing the company so much money because you could have done it in four hours and build this thing, but because you just like, you were just chilling all day long, now you lost the company and they just lost money on the job. It, both of them have these admirable things about them, but both of them have pitfalls. And so to understand where that needle needs to be is your job. And if you can understand by yourself, knowing when to shift gears and get everybody else around you to shift gears, you're gonna be able to be a lot more efficient. You're gonna keep making a lot more money. You're gonna do great work and you're gonna do it quickly. And that's what we want, right? Like a customer doesn't wanna have to pay $1,500 for a $300 job, but also if you produce a $300 job that is a $1,500 looking job, the phones are not gonna stop ringing. Y'all are gonna get so much work. So we're not out here just trying to like waste people's money. We're trying to do a job, do it right, do it well, and do it at a price that's like respectable and reasonable, make money, but don't charge people like an ungodly amount to do something, because then you're just an asshole and you're being greedy and it's not necessary. All right, so that's my six. Please let me know in the comments below uh, if I missed anything, if you think that there's things that are more important, less important, how you do things, if you disagreed with me, any of it, love your comments. Love you crazy people. I'll see you in the next one.